limited edition teenagers in the house? Raise your hand. Everything I do, I do it for you. That was really cringy. That was super cringy, I agree. But that's what I do for a living. My job is about listening to you, about creating a safe space where you can share yourself authentically. I'm super excited to be here in front of you doing this talk. Parents in the house, teachers in the house, raise your hand. Wow. For you and for myself, I'm scared. This talk on the tale of two generations is about exploring, going on a, roller, sorry, going on a roller coaster ride, understanding the realities of our children's generation, and then slowly witnessing the realities of our generation. I'm really scared, but I'm also thrilled. It's a tough topic, I agree. But if not now, then when? Are you ready? All right, let's begin. First things first, everyone in the house start wiping. Start wiping the slate clean. I really want a fresh beginner's mindset to what we are going to discuss. All right. Enough has been said on the deteriorating mental health of teenagers. The statistics on depression, on panic attacks, on suicidal tendencies, on self-harming, on unhealthy coping behaviors like vaping. We can go on and on and on, but it's on an, it's on an all time rise. It's not a good space to be for teenagers. And yet, the world of adults are very, very, very easy to label them as rebellious, as reckless, as entitled, as moody, as lazy, as argumentative. Let's first understand what goes on behind their brain. Join me in understanding how their brain works. So this part, I want everyone to touch to this part. Everyone here, touch this part. Teenagers, come on, touch this part. This part of your brain is your prefrontal cortex. The part of your brain where rational decision making happens. The part of your brain which tells you not to drink and drive. The CEO of your brain. And take a guess by what age it is completely developed. Yeah? Sorry? A good one, um, but still wrong, yeah? 25. Yeah, I like that look on everyone's faces. So your prefrontal cortex is developed at the age of 25, the CEO of your brains. So parents and teachers, take a note. Where do your children think from? And those moments when you actually tell them, what were you thinking? They were not even thinking, guys. They were just doing. They were just being. And so everyone in the room, touch this part of your brain. Sorry, this part of your brain. Yes. Feel it. That's your feeling part of your brain. Your amygdala. And interestingly, nature has it that the feeling part of the brain develops first. So all your children here are feeling beings. Be with that. No wonders they are impulse driven. No wonders they lean into temptations. It's a scary space out there for them. And if this science is not enough, they are actually going through identity crisis between the age of nine and 19. You may have noticed, sometimes they are looking in the mirror more often than not. They are constantly criticizing themselves. They don't like who they are becoming. Most importantly, it's a time for puberty and hormonal changes, the worst time, the time of awkwardness, of acne, of mood swings. Oh my God, they hate themselves in these times. And if this is not enough, there is the humongous pressure from the schools, from the teachers, from the academicians, from the parents, and then the self-expectation around the grades. 
The performance pressure to be perfect is immense. It's unbelievable. It's toxic. And then there is social media. The time in their life where they are constantly connected and still feel isolated. This is exhausting. This is really exhausting for them. And that's why today, if you look at the statistics, according to American Psychological Association, the teens of today's, their stress has by far suppressed the stress of the adults. I'm not surprised. Some of you here, most probably the dads, may be thinking, I am exaggerating this. They may think that the same science existed during our times, but we survived. Well, we did. But there was a lot more that was happening for us that was helping a developing brain. We had nurturing, safe environments to come home to. One of our parents, most often than not, was a house mother or a house parent. We had abundant outdoor time in nature. We had unstructured playtime. And these three things, unstructured playtime, time in nature, and a safe environment at home, is one of the most important thing for a developing brain, according to the health experts, according to brain health experts. And this is the reason why most of our children are having anxiety and depression and panic attacks, because they are not getting these three fundamental things. So no, the entire landscape has changed, guys. We need to come to their side now. In my work as a teen mentor, what I experience is teenagers are not argumentative, they are not moody, they are not entitled, they are not reckless. They are just trying to be themselves. They feel lost sometimes. They are trying to navigate their life as children. They feel unseen, unheard, invalidated. They feel misunderstood most of the time. And this lack of emotional need is what makes them lean into unhealthy coping like vaping and drinking. And the most disheartening fact is that they are not even aware that this is what they are feeling. They're not even aware that they lean into such impulsive decisions is because they don't feel seen in the world. This is their harsh reality. Let's move on to the harsh realities of our lives as the parents' generation. We had it tough, guys. We really, really had it tough. While we were growing up, we were made to obey our parents. We believed our parents did everything right. We came from a generation where we couldn't say no without feeling guilty. We also came from a generation where we had to do everything that they wanted us to do just to get a good boy, good girl, the praise we got only when we did something. And yet I'm not in any way blaming our parents. They were doing their best. They were striving to provide our food, shelter, clothing, and education needs. Emotional need was not even existent in those days. We didn't even talk about it. But that doesn't mean that our emotional needs were met. It's also important that we first discuss, we have to debunk some misconceptions of parenting that we follow. Our parents did it, and they did a great job, but not necessarily they were right. It's important we now look into those misconceptions and try to navigate as to what works for today. Misconception number one. Comparison is good for my child. It ignites motivation. Not at all. When I sit with my mentees and they share stories about being compared, I always ask them, how does this make you feel? And each time, the answer is just the same. I feel I am not good enough. I feel I will never be good enough. One of my mentees actually told me, comparison kills personality. And that stayed with me. So parents, make a note. Comparison actually plays a negative role 
in their self-esteem and self-worth. No more comparison to their siblings, to your times, to their friends. That's not helping. Misconception number two. Feelings and emotions, waste of time. Crying is for weak. This one is my favorite, guys. I've already established here that the feeling brain is the first one to get developed. That's nature. That means God is asking us to sit with our feelings. Feelings are the most important thing. Feelings tell you about who you are. Emotions tell you about what you're not getting. Feelings come and go, they don't stay. Emotions, on the other hand, when they are suppressed, they make space into your bodies. And that shows up as sickness. And if you don't believe me, you may have definitely met someone in your life who's constantly angry. It's like you feel you're walking on eggshells around them. And they snap at people. If you ask, what's going on really? There is some unmet desire which is not being fulfilled. And they are unable to express because our parents didn't taught us this. And it is those unexpressed feelings which then turn into blocked arteries, heart attacks. And most of us between 40 and 50 are also going through chronic pains. So all your suppressed emotion comes up as hip pain, as your lower back pain. And if any of you parents here relate to this, know that you are suppressing something. Emotions are very healthy. Let them come. Let's express. Anger is healthy. Crying is healing. Misconception number three. Mental resilience is built during adversity. We have to go through suffering to build our mental strength. Dr. Bruce Perry explains this beautifully. So stay with me, parents and teens, when I explain this to you. Every time when your child goes to school, they go through new experiences and they are out of their comfort zone and they actually experience a stress response of fight or flight, fight or flight, fight or flight. That means every time a teacher humiliates, fight or flight, bullying, fight or flight, exams, events, today's event at TEDx, fight or flight. Yeah, you relate to it. And then when they come home, your brain gets to rest and reset. Why? Because you have a nurturing environment. It's your safe space. You are comforted. You are loved. You get hugs and snuggles and conversations and engagement. And the next morning again, fight or flight, fight or flight. And you come home and reset and rest. Mental Strength, mental resilience is built in this dance of fight or flight and rest and reset. And this is very important that for your brain to build mental resilience in the development stage between zero to 25 years, you need a safe, loving environment, nurturing environment at home. So imagine when a child goes back to physical abuse, emotional abuse, judgment, pain, comparison, addictions, and then goes to school. It is this no rest in the brain that creates depression and most mental health conditions. Now you know, parents, how important it is when they come home, you're there to connect with them. I'm sure, again, some of the dads in the rooms must be thinking, but look, we turned out well. We didn't get all of this. Well, we really turned out well. In terms of financial abundance, yes. In terms of successes, yes. In terms of health, did we? How come our parents' generation is outliving us? How come our generation, 40 to 50 year olds, are going through heart attacks, blocked arteries, cancers, colitis, aches and pains, chronic ailments? What's going on? Some of them are really dying. And this is where you understand that the world of med medical health professionals have actually agreed that all suppressed emotions and stressors result into physical diseases. It's high time, parents, we start looking into that. At the same time, 
I have immense compassion for my parents here, for my generation of parents here. Guys, we are the sandwich generation. Like seriously, look at us. We couldn't say no to our parents without feeling guilty. Even today in our 50s, when they call, we can't say no because we feel guilty about something. And yet our children, oh, I love their authenticity. No. <laughs> and we take it. Even today when our parents give us some gyan or some wisdom nuggets, even if we don't understand, even if we don't agree, we listen. And our children, thank you for your gyan, but I'll take it from here. <laughs> At least either they say that or they give those looks that makes us feel that. It has been very difficult for us parents. We are still striving to understand who to please our children or our parents. It's a tough life for us. But it's also important that today when we are discussing this topic of the tale of two generations, it's important that bring in awareness. We are actually talking about the harsh realities we don't speak about for children, for the adolescents, and the harsh realities of parents. And this is one of the biggest reasons there is a rift between our generation. Our teens want to lean out when we come in the room. And the more they lean out, the more we lean in and we really don't know what's going on. I firmly believe awareness brings in perspective shift. The conversation today was about awareness on the realities of the adolescence generation and the realities of our generation. And I know in this moment, every parent, every teacher in the room is thinking, oh my god, I didn't need, know this about my child. You didn't know about the neuroscience for their impulsive decision making. You didn't know that they really need outdoor time, unstructured play time, they need nurturing for their brain to not give panic and anxiety attack. Now you know. Now you know that they are not leaning into all these unhealthy coping like vaping because they are brat or they are kids who are not aligned. They are doing it because they really don't know what else to do. In those spaces, they feel seen, they feel heard. But now you know. And as you know that, you acknowledge that. As you know that, you come closer to that reality. Same way for children, for adolescents. Now you know your parents don't know how to monitor through all these emotional conversations. They really don't know how to sit with you and give you attend, absolutely attuned attention. It's a very difficult time for them too. Some of, some of he, us here, women, are also going through menopause. That's a lot. It is these conversations that bring us closer to each other. So when I'm almost nearing this conversation on the tale of two generations, there is one bit of wisdom I would like to give to both the generations. Authentic communication. Authentic communication is something which actually aligns human beings and have deeper, much more connected relationship with each other. We really need that. Authentic communication means that parents, you can sit down and tell your children about the moments when you were young, when you were shamed and judged and those untold stories where you couldn't share with them, where you couldn't share with anyone. It's about sharing that maybe our parents were also not flawless. I would love for dads to sit with their children and tell them that how some of their dreams were squashed because dada, dada didn't believe in them. And that's okay, and we still love them. And then I would love this generation to talk to their parents and say about things that they are scared of as to why they took, said yes to that first hit of vaping, what was going on in their mind. It is these conversations which are awkward, scary, but this is what will bring us closer together. My only attempt at having this conversation is that every person in the room must feel heard, validated, and seen, and valued. And to all my teens in this room, I truly believe that you are creating
Well, for the rest of the speakers, this is a boon. It won't happen for you. <laughs> All my adolescents here, I truly believe that you are creative geniuses. Given the right environment, you're go you are have limitless potential. And I know with everything that's given today, you will follow through. Everything I do, I do it for you. I told you that. Namaste.